today? Um, today's course is about making this kind of peace flower or something similar looking. I mean, we are going for, uh, it, it's always artistic choices. When you, when, you forge, uh, when you forge flowers or you somehow recreate nature, it's artistic choices you make to either make this direction or the next direction. Okay, so uh, this particular one, maybe someone know from the internet and also from the invitation, is not really suitable for the average blacksmith and I show you why. The backside is just welded together and the idea was just to, you know, get something done quickly when it was needed to send a message. Uh, I, of course, have something differently prepared, which looks a bit more like this, but it, it's a mixture between the two and looks a bit more like a sunflower. So something like this we will do today. Um, to do this, we need three parts, which are the stem, the petals, and this part here, which in the real sunflower holds the seeds. I now call it the center from here on because this is pretty much what it does. It holds the uh, pieces together and looks like this is the center. Okay, great. So this is probably enough for the introduction. And uh, we go right into how do we come from something like this to something which looks like this. And uh, this, is, this is now a 60 millimeter radius, one millimeter sheet metal with a six millimeter hole in the center. Uh, you can as well make this like 80 millimeter, however, however big one can scale this project up. We are talking about something more this size. So if you compare it to my hand, this is about the size we are going for today in this project. So how do we get from here to here? Um, I found it easiest to first like mark the quarters. I hope one can somewhat see this, but probably one can see this. Like mark out the quarters in this. And separate the quarters again by uh, into thirds. So that we end up in the end with uh, in my opinion, it's 12 pieces. Anyway, it looks something like this. This is only for layout purposes. And it doesn't need to be exact since it's nature and the set, we are choosing an artistic impression. If it doesn't end up completely like symmetrical or anything, unless this is of course what you want to achieve. If you want to uh, have like a flower which looks 100% symmetrical, this is a different thing, then you have to have more accuracy in your layout. If you look for something which is more, let's say naturally looking, nature has all kinds of, um, yeah, where it's not 100% symmetrical. So, and this is what we are going for today. All right. Once we have marked it up and it looks something like this, maybe it's a bit easier to understand. So this is, uh, this is the pattern we want to achieve. And therefore we made this separation in the beginning. So once we have something like this, there are different ways to cut this out. Um, one way is, uh, where, where is my, where is my, I don't know. Um, just one moment. I need some of the need to fetch some hearing protection. All right. So there are different ways to get from here to here. One option would be to use uh, some kind of sheet metal shears, or you can also use a cold cutting chisel. These are all options. I personally found the best way to do this 
to do it with an angle grinder. And this is the way we are now going for. So um, I have made this kind of tool here. And what it basically does is uh, this is like a pair of vice grips uh, welded to some uh, kind of angle iron, which makes that I can put it and lock it into the vise like this. And so, uh, yeah, we can clamp it in that way, which makes it easy for me to come with the angle grinder in and do the cutting. So um, if you do this, I recommend you use a two millimeter sheet, uh, two millimeter cutting disc like this, because uh, the one millimeter cutting discs wear out in seconds. And uh, therefore it's, it's better done by this. Uh, we now mute because it's getting pretty noisy. We know this from experience. So, Mama. While uh, Patrick <clears throat> uh, preparing sheet of metal for uh, leaves of our sunflower, uh, we want to say that we are very glad that you decided to support uh, our Ukrainian community and become a participant of this event. Uh, we are glad to see each other at our uh, online event and uh, we wish everybody uh, enjoy our masterclass and be safe and be with Ukraine. Thank you very much, guys.
Яка тиша, наче мене на ковальському майстер-класі десь. Я? Ти свідав? Я. Окей, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, if you have any, like you, there is anything, say it out loud enough that we notice. <laughs> um, so, uh, afterwards, yeah, afterwards you have all these ugly birds here and they of course have to go. There are several ways how to do this. I personally recommend doing this, uh, of course, again, locked into the vise with an angle grinder. And afterwards go in with, I'm using a half round shaped file. Uh, this is a bit time consuming process. So I've prepared this part already and we can go to the next step. The next step is then here. And we need to get something like this for the center part. So how do we get here? Uh, there are numerous ways. You can, again, cold chisel this, cut this with an angle grinder, what have you. I happened to use this kind of, uh, I think, I believe it's called hole saw also in English, I think. And what it basically does, it follows the pre-drilled hole and makes this inside part, which is normally cut out, but for us is now the interesting part. Afterwards, you end up with something which looks like this. And then uh, this, uh, this, this is uh, four, uh, 52 millimeter outside diameter, and this is then 45 millimeter inside diameter. Uh, after what this has happened, we take a 12 millimeter drill and go in so that it has this kind of uh, offset in a way, or this, this kind of space where one can then rivet in. This is where then in the end, the, the rivet of the stem goes and holds the pieces together. All right. So now that we have these two pieces, we go over to the, to the end view and start working on them. Um, First of all, we take the petal and I happen to use a leafing hammer, which I made especially with this kind of radius for, for, uh, the, for the texturing. You can of course use your normal blacksmith hammer, hammer uh, whatever hammer suits you best. It is important that we not cover Maybe I'll show this on the other piece. So it is important that the texturing is not only on the final petal, but also a bit inside, because otherwise, when you put the, this part on top and the texturing goes only until here or here, you have these pieces which are untextured. And this is, of course, not what we would want the piece to look like in the end. So it is quite important to uh, make this texturing a bit inside. Once you do this cold, of course, you can also do this hot. Uh, I prefer to do it cold. I find this much more convenient than using foam.
Uh, Patrick, we need uh, to turn off, turn on your microphone. So once we have done this, uh, we need two of these, these pieces ready, we focus on the center part. Uh, of course, you can use, you can use whichever way of uh, heating your material to achieve this following step, I find. This induction forge personally to the handiest. Uh, by the way, I don't have a full forge in my workshop. And then we keep it the side where the uh, 12 millimeter hole is drilled up. Ever get this out. Get this ever over the hole so that Cover over the whole surface so it doesn't look like uh, like it cuts just from the steel rack. Uh, this is like a side cut, the final shape you want to achieve. We'll cut through on side cut. Patrick, can I ask you, you using uh, inducting heating? So as you see, we end up. Question: Are you using an induction heater? Yes, I use an induction heater. Yes, this is totally correct. Uh, uh, yeah. So as one can probably see, this has this slightly domed shape. This is what we are going for. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now, what? I switch this off for a second. So. One could now, of course, leave it, leave it uh, air cool, however one likes. We now don't have the time. And the question is, of course, now how do we get this place in which holds the seats? Basically, it's something like this. We take a center punch or whichever kind of punch with the shape you want, and then just Go all the way around and One can make this, of course, one can go 
a bit, but one can do less, one can do more. This is totally up to personal preference and to which kind of end result you want to achieve in your project. So now we have the petals ready. We have the center ready. Next thing is the stem. So, um, The stem is made out, in, in my case, you can, again, scale this up, scale this down totally to your, to your needs of your project. So uh, in my case, the stem is made out of 12 millimeter round stock, uh, structural steel or what have you. And first we do an off, like a, a, we create a tenon in one end, which will later go through the drilled holes and uh, rivet the pieces together and on the other side we will forge out the stem so i happen to have a power hammer which i will use to make it a bit faster and a bit convenient so that we can like go through this process fairly easy and quickly um, if you don't have a power hammer there is the possibility to achieve the same result by first isolating the material for the rivet tenon with a guillotine tool and then afterwards forging it out with another guillotine tool like this. Uh, you can of course also use a set hammer. You can even if you're skillful enough, this is quite difficult, forge it just uh, with the just like this. But this is really difficult and the easiest way is probably to use either something like this, a power hammer, or find a striker for the for the um, set hammers. So, as I said, I happen to have a power hammer, which I will use. Um, Thank <laughs> you. 
silence. <laughs> so, um, one can make it as thin or as thick as it fits the project, obviously. Um, finally, uh, and you take however many heats you need to draw it out as much as you want. Obviously, you can do similar at the anvil over the horn doing the, the drawing out and then afterwards clean it up here. This is totally up to personal preference. Finally, if you do it like I did under the power hammer, you have to clean up the transition. And you see uh, here, so you see, we have like first created the tenon, the six millimeter tenon in this case. Then we have drawn out the stem, cleaned up the transition, and uh, maybe it might be necessary to uh, clean up more of the forging, but. Since this piece was only for demonstration, uh, this is not necessary. I have here one piece which is ready clean up, finally done such that it fits also to the upper part, like to the other three parts. And then they go together such that petal one, petal two, and the center, uh, because this, this is in the next step heated and peened over, uh, you want here enough material to peen it over. Um, this is probably something like this, about 10 millimeter, something like that. Um, but if it's a bit more or a bit less, it's, not so super important. You will, that you, worst case, you do it another time and then you know what went wrong in the first place. So we go over to the vice. Muslim for Dahin. And this kind of technique might cause uh, some burrs here where it's then smashed into the vise. It is helpful to use like copper or brass or what have you uh, coatings or coverings. I don't have them at the moment. So, but in generally this is very advisable. Um, if you don't have it, you don't have it, and you have to clean up, clean it up afterwards with the file, which I would then need to do. So, uh, what do we need for this process? Um, I like to use a small ball peen hammer. Uh, you can use certainly whichever hammer you have. And now, you can you can also do this with a welder, like you can weld the pieces together. I did this here, and what I found is that the, this and this piece, and of course the stem, stick very well together, but this stays loose. Actually, you see how they are still loose. So I, uh, I have had better results with riveting it together. Um, for the riveting, there are different options. Either you're very quick and your forge setup is such that it's possible, 
you take it from your forge here, it has still enough color in it, and you hammer it down. I don't happen to have this kind of setup. And if this is if this is similar for you, this is a good time to get out your oxyacetylene setup. This happens to be mine. I just recently acquired it. Um, you might know this with the bigger bottles, but the thing is, I use it so rarely that the bottles are so expensive, it's not worth for me having them. So, keeping in mind your regular oxyacetylene rules, like putting on blue first, and then which whatever, if you have acetylene or oxygen, that's totally like, this is what you have. And then turn it a bit on. Get the, get the flame set up. And this takes however long it takes for you. And now we heat this part up here. I hope I can somewhat see this. And this might need that you heat it like a couple of times. And in this process, this step, it's important that they stay such that the one beside goes between the two ones in the front. There was a question. If there are any questions, ask them, like per voice, please. No question. Uh, it's uh, very beautiful. No, thank you. <laughs> Maybe one more time. Yep, one more time. So one can of course say that well, once it's super tight and so on, and this is great, but for now it, it does what it should. 
it illustrates it illustrates what it has to illustrate. Uh, that one closes the oxygen center and set up again. and releases all the gas. Yep. And sets these again somewhere where it doesn't burn your workshop or explode or anything like this. As you probably know, these oxyacetylene setups are, uh, especially the big ones, quite quite uh, delicate. So, afterwards, we end up with something which looks like this. And you may notice that some things are missing. Like normally you can of course transmit this to every kind of flower. Normally your flower would be kind of kind of ready at that stage. So if we go just kind of for something like this, we're just missing the piece symbol and the yellow color. Um, let's go first to the piece symbol. So, and because the stem comes from here, this is how we orient our peace symbol. So there are different ways to establish this. I personally found it the handiest to just use a handheld chisel like this. And there you have it. It's of course like, <laughs> it's of course it would need to be in this orientation to really look like a peace symbol. So the thing is, if it's like this, uh, you can also do it with an angle grinder again. Like you can do one cut like this and come in at a slight angle like this and like that. I tried that once, it's possible. It's quite difficult to not harm the center part doing that. But you know, you're an artist, you make your own choices, you see the results and you learn what you want to do next time different maybe. Okay, so the other thing if we want to compare it to that one is the yellow color. Um, also, it might be that we want to a bit warp the leaves, a bit bend the leaves so that it looks not as straight as it does here. Uh, for this process, again, we need heat. In uh, you begin over. So we go over there again. Um, Uh, and I use again the induction forge for that. Um, so you can as well do this in a in your regular coal forge. Uh, if you do this in a gas forge, this is a bit difficult. But basically, what you do is you bend the leaves forward one by one and a bit nick them, warp them to one direction, warp them a bit to the other. We make it now a bit easy for us. We just warp them in one direction just to kind of 
illustrate the process for you. And if you do this in a coal forge, obviously, where this is the top of your fire, you have to go in something like, like this is the top of your fire, you have to go something like this. And also in a coal fire, you don't really need much heat to bend this thin steel. Like, uh, a light red heat, dull red, no, maybe not dull red, but as you see, something like in the like in the six, seven hundreds ish is totally enough. And it comes pretty fast also in a in a coal forge. Uh, yeah, if you're doing this in a gas forge, you might run into problems with the size and it's that you heat all everything at once. And this might cause the steel to get brittle over the multiple heats you need. But guess what? Depending on the outcome you want to achieve, I mean, look at this. You could even do this to a certain extent, extent cold. And it would still get the message transmitted. So once we have all of, on the front row, we do the same to the back side. And as you as you saw, you can do that even somewhat cold. It's a bit easier if one warms it to, because then one can a bit more freely tilt the material without risking cracks or breaks or what have you. Uh, if you're doing this in a coal forge, you start, maybe it makes sense to start with the, uh, this row first, bend all in this direction, unless, uh, except the one which you want to heat, and bend these to the other direction, and then go for the other. For example, if you make them out of, uh, which you could, of course, Make them out of thicker sheet metal. This might be might be a better better way to do it. Last one. Oh no, pre last one. And this is maybe not so interesting for a sunflower, but of course, if you heat it, you have better options to crimp it a bit more. Let's say if you're making a rose or making whichever flower has more crimped petals. This might make perfect sense. So, oh, we missed one in the first row. Okay. So, what you end up with is something which looks a bit like this. And um, this might be exactly what you want, that it happens. And for, uh, at least to my so far knowledge, um, 
in sunflowers, the two row, the rows of the petals are relatively, relatively close to each other. So if you go for something which looks about like this, you could say it's ready here, as you could, as you could before doing this crimping process. You can say also it's ready here. Um, but we're of course now still missing the yellowish color. So how does this come into play? Well, um, you need something like a brass brush uh, and they also make them like as rotary tools for at least for hand power, like for uh, power drills um, or I think also for angle grinders. But I found this particular like the handheld ones uh, the most, the, the nicest to control where it goes. Uh, but with the rotary powered ones, it's, it's easier to achieve an even yellow, brassy yellow as you have seen in the invitation flower. So um, to get the brass on, we have to heat it again. And it's like, a, well, what is it? It's like, uh, 200, 300 degrees Celsius, something like this. So it's a fairly, fairly minimal heat we need. And then one just brushes it over. Um, so, so we again go over a bit like heating the petals slightly. And one can already see that there are brassy glimmers. And if you, if you do this and you heat it too hot during that process, the brass will burn off. So be careful, you know, a slight heat. And here you can already see how the, especially here, this leaf has got really, really well taken the brass. So these are still missing. Remember, even if this doesn't show any heating color or anything, it's still hot at this moment. So uh, one can one can make the make the brass a bit more shine out when one does this for extended period of time. One uh, like like deeper. If one has a bit higher heat, it sinks in better, soaks in better. I mean, what happens is that the uh, like this end of the brush is kind of like rubbed into the steel. So this is what happening there. Uh, if you make it a bit hotter, it sticks a bit better in. Um, yeah. So this is <laughs> this is a way to forge this particular style of uh, of flower. 
Of course, there are other options where you, how you can go with this. Uh, I showed some of them, not all, but some. Um, I mean, uh, as most of the time with blacksmithing, sky and your imagination and your creativity are the limits. And uh, I would like to, uh, as kind of conclusion of this demonstration, uh, before we go into the questions, I would like to thank my teachers uh, explicitly. I would like to thank Perti Virta, uh, who was my master during this journeyman education, until journeyman education. I would like to also thank Mark Asprey for providing most of the ideas which went into making this kind of flower. Uh, I would like to give a big thank you to the man you only saw a little in the beginning who has been holding the camera all the time. And I would like to, of course, thank the people organizing this event for making all this possible that we can share this kind of knowledge. And I hope there are other Smiths who are also interested of giving presentations for this noble cause. All right. This, this was it from me. If there are any questions, now would be a good time to ask them because now I can hear what you say. <laughs> uh, I propose uh, to share uh, your impression of our today event. And if you uh, want to ask something, it's time to. Switch the camera. Dann sehe ich auch ein bisschen was. Ne? So, dann, ja, okay, so now I can even see uh, something. <laughs> What people are. Yeah, it was very constructive and everything is clear and uh, the brass color on the leaves of uh, sunflower is great. It, it's like a trick. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick, very, very much. Um, Patrick, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. You're well, welcome. <laughs> uh, there's another way to achieve a yellow color, or uh, which also works if you want blue flowers, like let's say you make, or purple, let's say you make this forget me not flower. I hope that's the name in English as well. You can of use, of course, use like a, a propane burner or an oxyacetylene burner if you want to spend more money while heating for using the tempering colors. This also can give like from straw yellow to a very light blue. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> if, if you signed up for this class, I assume you have some idea how to work with steel. So uh, we can use, uh, we, uh, we can also use uh, gas heating for uh, making color. So, if you, for example, use something like this, mm -hmm. I mean, this makes like this, like <laughs> you can use something like this to basically paint on the steel. Uh, I switch this off. It feels a bit dangerous. <laughs> um, yeah, you can. Also It's still hot, the flower, by the way. <laughs> I have a question with the um, forge induction. How does it work and how did you manage with it, with forging? We uh, have, do we have the shape of uh, copper? No? Okay, uh, well, I, I think I got what the question was about. So. Uh, I think this question was about this induction heater and how do I manage with forging with it? So the answer is I manage great. Uh, as you maybe see like this here with the two anvils you saw, like this, uh, this gas forge and this induction forge are the main sources of heating I use. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't have a chimney in my workshop. Uh, 
uh, because this is an old cow shed and it would have been very expensive to build a, sh a chimney inside here, so I didn't. <laughs> and um, this is uh, like this induction forge is great for all kinds of smaller localized heat. So, for example, uh, when doing the leaves, I mean, you probably saw it, it, it gives very fast um, a certain amount of uh, heat to the steel, and this it does really well. So, I managed great. Um, you, I have this, you can see probably here. I have some different coils in different sizes. I mainly use this one, which is, is it like 32 millimeter inside diameter? No, it's 40 millimeter inside diameter. Um, and it heats most of the steel I want to heat. So it heats from six millimeter to 16 millimeter fairly efficiently, efficient enough for forging purpose. I mean, it's not industry. <laughs> then you would probably want something, some different efficiency. Um, yeah, this it does really well. Uh, I hope this answered your question. How many electricity uh, yes. it, it spent? This is a good question. I don't exactly know. Um, I know that it is so little that I didn't notice a significant increase on the, increase on the electricity bill. So I've been using this now for about a year, like I have got it in the beginning of last year. And I have not noticed a increase uh, of price on the electricity bill, if one takes the price increase for the recent situation out. <laughs> this is of course different. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you too, Becky. All right. Uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, I, I ask him, maybe some, somebody want to ask something. Okay. Uh, uh, if questions are no, uh, we want to say, uh, everybody, thank you very much uh, that you connect to us today. We want to say uh, thank you, Nika Kaspers, Adrian Corbin, uh, Lorinda Brinton, uh, Cruz Efranzel Valnos, if, if you are with us, Judy Bliss. Uh, Tetiana Titska, uh, Talisman, and a big, big thank you very much, Patrick Beck, that hold on our online event today and show us uh, a few tricks how we uh, can make a sunflower, how we can colorize uh, our metal. And I think I, I uh, get new information for me and uh, it was uh, very constructive and all or everything was clear this is amazing i have one more thing to say uh, i made like a, 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 I, di I did however many pieces to have things set up such that it, it works fine and fast today i've made a photo kind of a photo story step by almost step by step a picture journey I will send this to you somewhere during the next week, Andre, and then you can either share it with the participants or you probably know a way how to constructively use it. It, it will be great. We, uh, we also want to make a presentation with each uh, uh, masterclass workshop that we uh, hold in the past and your workshop and make a good line how to do such things. Uh, we think it, it will be great that uh, we can share our knowledges even with video and some uh, presentation material. Yep, I agree. Great. So yep. thank you guys for connecting <laughs> to us today. We are 
thank everybody that you uh, uh, want to support you uh, our Ukrainian community and uh, to know something you to become uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> To, to, to become great at blacksmith with uh, a new knowledges and new skills. Ми поширимо відео на YouTube і поширте між своїми друзями, якщо можна. And we will um, uh, publish this video on the YouTube of this masterclass and you can share uh this uh, uh, through your friends uh and they can watch how to do this and uh, be with us and uh, and learning how to do a piece of flower а ми відправимо всім українським ковалям які сьогодні не змогли долучитися до нас and we also will send uh, this video and uh, information about uh, all of masterclass to Ukrainian community of blacksmiths and we um, we hope that we will have time that everybody uh, blacksmiths in Ukraine have time to to make some flower uh, flower of the peace by self and 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 we have a great days in Ukraine. You. Thank you. So Thank if you. we if uh, somebody want to ask something or say uh, you're welcome. If Everything no, uh, I want to say goodbye to everybody. We will uh, meet maybe in another week. Uh, thank you very much for your connecting and goodbye. Bye bye. Best wishes from Ukraine and we love you so much, guys. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. It was great. <laughs> bye. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.